Well, good day, and thank you for joining our presentation today. I am Richard Sims, Director of National Council with Viking, and I'll be your host today as we discover the world of Viking, but more specifically, the allure of river cruising and which European river is right for you. I want to remind you that uh, we have a question box there, so feel free to uh, type in your questions as we go through the presentation. We'll be happy to try to answer those uh, questions at the end of the presentation. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to take myself off screen here and uh, start this uh, presentation again on the Lure River cruising and which European river is for you. I also want to uh, give a shout out to, uh, of course, the Cruise Web. Uh, they are a great travel partner with Viking. Uh, and my responsibility at Viking as Director of National Council is I actually work with the team at uh, the Cruise Web to take care of you, our mutual clients. So, uh, again, welcome, and we look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you on a Viking cruise in, in the very near future. So that being said, we'll get started here and uh, you know start with the uh, the lore of cruising, uh, river cruising, because uh, again, there's so many great things out there uh, to enjoy about uh, river cruising. First, we'll start uh, off by just talking a little bit about Viking. If you're uh, new to Viking or not as familiar with us, you know we are. Uh, the world leader in river cruising. We started on the rivers of Russia over uh, 23 years ago, um, but it's all about uh, you know those enriching cultural experiences that are going to await you on a Viking river cruise. As you can see from this map, we sail the rivers of Europe, Russia, Egypt, Ukraine, uh, and Southeast Asia. When it comes to river cruising though, Viking is the world leader as I mentioned. Uh, we've been voted the best river cruise line by Continents Travel in the publications 2017-18 and 2020 Reader's Choice Awards. Uh, that is something that we are very proud of. Uh, but we've also have been honored to receive 15 years recognition from Connie Nose Traveler's Readers. Uh, we're at the number one winning score again in 2020. Uh, Connie Nose Traveler Readers have voted us higher uh, than any other cruise line. But we also have received numerous other awards as well uh, that uh, you can see here. So it's not about just uh, you know, one ship, one river with Viking, it's about all of our river ships, all of the rivers that we travel on that's gonna provide that uh, consistent, wonderful Viking experience every single time. So let's talk a little bit about the Viking philosophy because I think it's important for you to know when you cruise with Viking, what to expect. And our Viking philosophy is very simple. We don't wanna be everything to everyone. You know, We're gonna focus on uh, our guests who are English speaking, they're mature couples or uh, they're solo travelers that have curious minds and an interest in history, culture, geography. Um, we do not allow anyone under the age of 18, so no children under the age of 18, no casinos on board our ships, uh, as well as our ocean ships, uh, you know, no casinos. Uh, we are a destination-oriented cruise line, which means we're focused on you know, delivering uh, fantastic itineraries that are going to be spending more time in port uh, giving you more opportunities to, uh, again, get closer to these iconic towns and, and uh, iconic cities and quaint towns along the rivers of uh, Europe or wherever uh, you want to cruise in the world. We also have a very highly inclusive product, so you're not going to be nickel and dimed once you're on board. We're an efficient operator, uh, and this allows us to pass those savings on to you and provide a great value uh, when you're looking to, uh, to cruise. We'll have more details on that here shortly uh, with being an efficient operator and uh, the value uh, with our inclusiveness uh, of uh, the Viking experience. It's also about our crew, it's our staff. Uh, you know, we wanna make sure we hire the best staff in the cruise industry and we have the highest retention rate. All of our crew are Viking employees. Uh, that's not the case with other uh, river cruise lines necessarily. So uh, they really come back year after year after year and allows us to maintain high service levels that our guests expect, but they also love. And one of the reasons why they bring, uh, why they come back and sail with us time and time again. So let's talk about the Viking difference and, and what has built our brand over the last 23 years. We are simply known as the thinking person's cruise. Uh, we are uh, creating these itineraries for those curious travelers, again, who want to explore, to learn, to understand. They wanna be immersed in the destination. Uh, they want to, uh, you know, understand more, explore more uh, there uh, in the destination uh, we're taking them to. One of the things I love about Viking is before you even leave uh, the comfort of your home and, and start your journey to your uh, Viking ship is that we've got great resources for you to enjoy in the comfort of your own home. And what I mean by that is we've got uh, book titles, filmographies that you can uh, uh, look at the list and choose to, uh, to view or to read. Uh, about that specific area you're going to be traveling through. So it really allows you to, to understand that destination before you even leave the comfort of your home. 
we're going to have amazing activities on board, but also on shore. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in, in detail shortly. We're also going to be able to uh, allow you to connect with fellow travelers because you're traveling on these small ships, uh, anywhere from 80 guests up to 190 guests. That small ship feel of a, a river cruise allows you that uh, connection uh, with other travelers that have a like-minded interest uh, like yourself. And uh, again, we see it time and time again, those uh, lifelong friendships that are developed. We're the small ship experts. Uh, again, more than two decades of experience uh, on the rivers. These are elegant, intimate vessels. Again, 80 up to 190 guests on board. Uh, the heart of the destination is really one of the benefits of river cruising. It's just a short walk away from the gangway. We're gonna be docking right there in the heart of these towns and cities. Uh, the innovative and inventive and innovative ship design of our Viking longships really sets us apart. Uh, this really revolutionized uh, river cruising. Uh, we are uh, you know, very proud of our Viking longships, which you see here. Uh, they're award-winning, uh, and it's just an amazing uh, design and features that we have on board. Uh, I love our Aquabee Terrace, which you see there out on the bow, which is uh, you know, very unique to Viking, uh, because that's traditionally where uh, on other river cruise line ships, that's where the the, uh, the davits and the ropes and uh, you know all the mechanical gear is out up on the bow, but on biking, this is where you're gonna be able to dine al fresco and then take in the sights around you. And another big difference with biking and why we uh, are so great at delivering a consistent experience, regardless of the river, regardless of the ship, is that we own and operate all of our ships. We own and operate our entire fleet. Again, our crew are all biking employees. This creates a seamless and consistent experience, especially if uh, we, we run into the issues of high water, low water, that of course can happen. Uh, you know, we're gonna be transferring you from one Viking longship to another Viking longship. You're gonna be going literally from the same accommodations to the same accommodations, same stateroom number, everything. That is an amazing, uh, you know, uh, seamless experience that brings tremendous value to your vacation if you run into that uh, you know, uh, problem on your cruise. Uh, and again, that's something that we have the advantage of doing that other cruise lines just can't uh, you know, guarantee. The destination focused dining uh, aspect of a river cruise, especially on Viking, is such an important part of the journey because, again, we're going to operate uh, these ships with uh, multiple dining venues, but the uh, you know, opportunity to, to have the most alfresco dining uh, on the rivers. You know, cuisine and the wine are definitely part of your journey. And one of the benefits of river cruising is just having all those locally sourced, uh, you know, vegetables and fruits, uh, meats, and all those, uh, you know, provisions are going to be sourced locally. And it really, uh, you know, transfers into the, the uh, cuisine and the quality of the cuisine versus the, you know, the big multi or the big, you know, mega ships uh, out that are out there on the ocean. So if you've cruised on the oceans before, especially on the large mega ships, I mean, this is the exact opposite of that. I mean, this is, you know, uh, again, locally sourced uh, ingredients and uh, provisions uh, in a just incredible setting that provides that true um, taste of that region that you're traveling through. On every cruise, regardless of the region, we feature a signature taste of events. Uh, and this is going to be where we bring on board, uh, you know, uh, a destination performance, uh, you know, from the locals that's uh, going to, you know, also include cuisine wine tastings, um, but you know, from our taste of events uh, and, and the destination performances, we could have you know, Viennese opera singers or Marinsky theater singers come on board uh, and uh, perform for our guests. Again, bringing that destination on board our ships to, uh, you know, for them to enjoy. And it's also uh, important to note, it's about casual elegance. You know, we don't require coat and ties. There's no formal nights. It is true casual uh, uh, atmosphere on board our beautiful ships. Already talked about the, uh, our award-winning service again. Uh, we're the employer of choice. Over 90% of our guests return year after year. That allows us to provide a consistent level of service to our guests, uh, regardless of what ship and what river you're gonna be cruising on. And we also provide that service guarantee uh, and the only cruise line to do that. Our onboard enrichment, uh, getting a little bit deeper into that is really focused on bringing that culture and history to life. Uh, you know, it's, it allows uh, us to provide uh, you know, more light and shed light on the destination, the art, uh, the architecture, music, the history, of course, of, of where you're going to be traveling. We include one short excursion uh, on, on shore uh, in every port of call. That's included in, the, in your Viking cruise price. So an included short excursion in every port. Um, there's also other opportunities to explore. 
Um, but before you even get to your destination, we're going to have port talks and we're going to have a cultural curriculum uh, for you to go and enjoy at your leisure. Uh, that really consists of informative lectures, uh, doing wine tastings again. Um, yeah, again, the destination performance, as I mentioned just a moment ago. But when you get ashore, we've got uh, really a, a great uh, list of, of, of options for you to go beyond the iconic. You know, uh, if, if you want to do the included shore excursion, great. Uh, if you don't, there's other optional experiences that we have for you um, that's going to really allow you, again, to, to view the destination how you want to view it, uh, meaning how much do you want to be immersed in the destination? What do you want to go and explore? It allows you to truly personalize your journey and allows you to, uh, you know, again, come away with more uh, uh, memories of that destination. One of the things that I love about our uh, onshore experience is the Viking way of exploration. And our Viking way of exploration really gives you behind the scenes uh, opportunities uh, focused on local life, working world, and privileged access. And this allows you more of an emotional connection to the destination. And what I mean by that is the interaction that you're able to uh, have with the locals uh, featuring a local life, working world of privileged access really brings an, an additional element to your vacation. And, and we feel brings more um, special memories and moments because you're able to, to learn more um, by interacting with the locals. Uh, local life, you may have a, uh, an in-home dining experience or going out uh, and, and enjoying uh, the Cologne, uh, the, the, the uh, beer uh, garden, uh, the bra house uh, there in uh, Cologne, for example, uh, in that local life experience. But it's also about the working world and, and learning uh, the industry, the trade, uh, the um, craftsmanship or the, uh, uh, the industry, again, that was, was famous in that particular area, like the, the windmills at Kinderdijk uh, there in the Netherlands. And then we have opportunities that are just really one of the kind that we've really uh, are able to provide our guests because of our relationships with us, uh, you know, special um, places like the Hermitage. Uh, we've got an incredible partnership with the Hermitage and being able to provide, uh, you know, behind the scenes, after hours uh, experiences there at the Hermitage that uh, they just don't do with anyone else. You know, those are those privileged access, one in a lifetime type experiences that we have. So again, these won't be necessarily offered in every single port of call, uh, or every town you'll visit, but uh, they're there for you to, again, immerse yourself and personalize your journey along the way. So the Viking inclusive value, uh, very important for you to know that besides just that one shore excursion that we include, we also include all your onboard meals. So we don't have any uh, uh, specialty dining or uh, additional dining charges uh, for you. Uh, we include wine, beer, and soft drinks uh, on board with lunch and dinner. Uh, we have the opportunity for you to uh, purchase our Silver Spirits beverage package before you depart if you want to do that. So speak to your uh, Cruise Web uh, travel uh, advisor about that. Uh, that usually runs about $20 per person per day and uh, very popular with our guests who just want to uh, have that freedom and flexibility to, uh, to order a drink in the non-lunch and dinner hours or they uh, enjoy a fine cocktail uh, and liquor drinks that they would uh, you know, want to uh, have access to. We also include specialty coffees and teas, bottled water for you. Um, so incredible value, again, that's part of the uh, experience for you uh, with the, um, uh, the Viking value that we have. Uh, also, the, the free Wi-Fi that we have included is, is also very popular with our guests. Uh, so there's a great uh, inclusion there. So great value when you book uh, with uh, Viking. And, and finally, it's really about you know, try not to nickel and diming you. Uh, so when your travel advisor quotes you uh, the cruise rate, that's going to include those poor charges of government taxes. That's not an additional fee plus plus uh, like the other cruise lines. We have that already included in your cruise fare. And speak to them also about uh, you know pre and post land extensions because we stay in first class hotels, centrally located, uh, and provide excellent opportunities for you to linger uh, along the way. We also have, uh, you know, with these explore, uh, what we call our explore more pre and post uh, land extensions, it really allows you again to, to linger and uh, just dive more into the destination. Uh, take advantage of that long flight over to Europe and spend uh, more time. Uh, it's always a hotel stay at a four or five star restaurant uh, in the heart of the city. You're going to have select meals included. You're going to have select, uh, you know, included guided tour tours, depending on the length of your extension that you're booking. Uh, a Viking host is going to be on site to answer any questions and assist you along the way. Uh, and it also includes all your transfers. And so this is a great opportunity, again, to 
really explore the destination. And just because you are, let's say you do a Rhine River cruise, you would be limited to uh, pre and post extensions there in Amsterdam or in Basel. Not the case because, you know, that's one where you can add on a pre or post, um, you know, Downton Abbey, High Clare Castle experience uh, in the Brit in, in, over in the UK. So, you know, speak to your travel advisor about the, the opportunities to, uh, you know, to look at these pre and post land extensions. I think uh, it's a great way to explore around 65 to 70 percent of our guests uh, annually book a pre or post land extension. It's just truly a great way to travel. Now, also we'll mention about 85% of our guests book air through Viking. And uh, because they booked air through Viking, we will uh, include transfers for you. So when you fly into your airport, uh, if you've, you're flying in the day of departure, we'll be of course meeting you at the airport and transferring you over to your ship. Or if you've done our pre or post uh, land extensions, we'll be uh, you know, transferring to or from as well. So again, we've uh, got great value there with, uh, with Viking, even um, when you buy your air with the transfers included. Just briefly want to mention our Viking health and safety programs because it changes uh, every day. And depending on when you're, um, you know, uh, you know, looking to cruise or to book uh, or the day you're cruising, uh, you know, if it's this year or next year, uh, you know, things could be uh, changing uh, again by the day. So I'm just gonna, uh, you know, really give you the best advice. We've got a great uh, uh, landing page on our website that gives you frequently asked questions, but goes through day by day of uh, before you depart, while you're on board, uh, you know, while you're on shore, just of all the different health and safety protocols that we have in place currently. Um, but just know that we are the leader in the cruise industry in health and safety. Uh, we are, uh, you know, doing PCR, non-invasive PCR testing daily if, if needed. Um, we have that capability of giving this, uh, doing the saliva test if that's uh, you know required or needed. Um, but we've got you know more safety and healthy pro health protocols in place than any other cruise line out there. So just know that when you cruise for Viking, your uh, health and safety, uh, health and uh, your, your health is our prime you know concern and making sure that you have an enjoyable vacation experience. But again, uh, please uh, you know speak to your travel advisor at the cruise web or. Uh, refer to our landing page for uh, specific details. And again, it's changing daily. So uh, don't want to get into too many specifics because they could be outdated tomorrow. So why take a river cruise? Um, and this is getting into the lure of river cruising and which European river cruise is for you. Uh, so why take a Viking river cruise? Or really, why take a river cruise in general? You know, you've maybe heard a lot about river cruising and it's booming and it's very popular, but well, why is that? Well, it's important to note that a lot of these, um, you know, these things that we're about to discuss really are at the center and the heart of why you would want to take a river cruise, because these are true benefits of a river cruise that you just don't get from that traditional ocean cruise. First is that, you know, these iconic uh, destinations are literally, you know, at your doorstep. Uh, you know, you're able to uh, you know, visit some of the world's greatest cities because many of, uh, of these towns and cities in Europe were built alongside the rivers. You know, think of Paris, think of Budapest, Vienna, uh, Cologne, Strasbourg. I mean, there's so many, uh, you know, to name, but that's one of the big benefits is stepping off the, the, the ship. And, and here is a great uh, example of that. This is our Viking longships on the Danube uh, there underneath the chain bridge, the famous iconic chain bridge in Budapest. And you, you step right off the gangway, you're right in the heart of Budapest. Uh, and it, that is what it's all about. It's, it's these iconic cities and being there on its doorstep. One of the benefits of a river cruise, convenient and comfortable. You know, um, you know similar to a, an ocean cruise maybe that you've taken, you know, you wake up, uh, you know, with a magnificent, uh, you know, view from your stateroom, you know, every day. Uh, you know, your stateroom on Viking ships include all the fine comforts of home and uh, you've got wonderful plush down comforters and bathroom uh, amenities and, uh, you know, spacious bathrooms. Lots of storage space in your uh, staterooms, but you can choose from a range of accommodations. Um, but it's really about, again, just uh, unpacking once and, and uh, being able to literally wake up uh, with a different view in a different uh, town every single day along the river. And these rivers, of course, unlike ocean cruises where you may be far away from shore when you're cruising, here, you know, you feel like you can just reach out and touch the shore because the rivers um, are, are that narrow. Um, again, a new experience every day. I just kind of hinted at that. I mean, being able to, um, you know, wake up in a UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, which so many of these towns and cities along the, 
the rivers of Europe uh, are. Uh, you know, from uh, Prague or you know being on the uh, the Rhine and going through the the castle region. It's really an amazing experience to wake up uh, to different uh, you know culture, scenery uh, in a different town every single day uh, when you're cruising on the rivers. It's also about the culture and history. Again, you know, we, we talk about docking in the heart of the town and stepping off, um, but you know, it really is just a step away. And so many of these places are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Um, you know, United Nations have designated these sites as you know, cultural um, you know, landmarks. They're, they're not to be destroyed or touched or altered in any way. They need to be preserved. And, and so many of these beautiful places that you're gonna cruise uh, an experience on the rivers, uh, really, that's what the heart of it's all about. It's about that old world tradition and those old world cultures uh, that you get to experience when you uh, travel uh, on the rivers. It's also about an intimate experience, you know, traveling again on a smaller ship, you know, anywhere from 80 guests up to 190 guests is going to allow for more of an intimate experience and a chance to get to know your fellow travelers and make new friends. Again, you're traveling with like minded individuals. And so being able to you know, share these incredible experience and moments. And there's so many moments uh, on a river cruise. It's not just one big thing or two or three big things or two or three big cities. It's dozens and dozens of little moments um, that will catch you unaware uh, or not ex that when you're expecting that you're going to just remember and just share that with new friends or, to, you know, traveling with other friends. If you're, you know, um, uh, traveling with uh, friends you already know. I mean, those are the special moments that are created, um, you know, when you're on a river ship and, and being on these, uh, you know, intimate smaller vessels. It's also about being, you know, an inclusive experience, as I mentioned, you know, with the Viking value, you know, being able to, uh, you know, have those English speaking guides, uh, having the opportunity to, uh, you know, have the Wi-Fi included, your meals, your, you know, your wine and beer and, and soft drinks at lunch and dinner. I mean, the the inclusiveness of the experience brings a tremendous value to uh, you know, the river when you book with Viking. It's about the food and the wine. I've already spoke about you know, being able to source uh, local ingredients uh, and, and you know, go ashore even if you want to with our, our chef and uh, you know, pick out the ingredients at the local market and come back on board and, and do a hands-on cooking class uh, and have that meal really just amazing experiences when you're tasting the true region and cuisine you're traveling through and of course the wines as well. And it's also about, you know, the opportunity, you know, to think of uh, to go ashore at night and, and dine ash uh, ashore with, um, you know, eating in a French bistro, you know, and having that authentic, incredible cuisine and a great atmosphere uh, in that town, uh, maybe in Strasbourg and this around the square. You know, it's about that, uh, you know, the cuisine, and, and that's the heart, of, again, of, of being on a river cruise and, and really what we focus on when you travel with us. And again, it's about the entertainment. It's about the knowledge you're going to gain, the onboard activities and experiences, as well as your, uh, you know, ashore uh, to really complement your journey. And again, it allows you to personalize that journey, um, you know, along the way. Uh, you know, you're not going to have these, you know, huge stage productions on board. You know, this is going to be a relaxed, sit back, relax, you know, type environment um, with those, again, whether you're going to a destination lecture or, or seeing the local entertainment we bring on board, um, you know, to just, you know, coming out of dinner and having a, a glass of wine and relaxing again, um, you know, with your significant other or with your newfound friends. It's really about a relaxation on a river cruise. And, you know, I talk about, you know, personalizing your journey, and, and that's truly the beauty of a river cruise, because it, it does allow you to travel at your own pace, and that's very important, because, again, you're stepping off the gangway, and you can go on our included shore excursion, and then, again, do you want to come back and relax? Do you want to have lunch, in a, again, in a local cafe, uh, you know, go and immerse yourself with an optional experience that uh, interests you? Uh, come back for an afternoon nap, and then go back ashore. I mean, there's so many, um, you know, things that you can do to really uh, set your day, but it's all about traveling at your own pace. All right, so which European river cruises for you? Because each river has its own characteristics um, that uh, are gonna appeal to uh, one set of travelers that may not appeal to another. So first off, let's kind of go through each of the rivers and then we'll uh, talk about what uh, rivers would be best for you, depending on your interests. So first off is the Danube. And the Danube River Cruise is going to unveil, uh, you know, Europe's rich and dramatic history. Uh, you know, you're going to experience glittering cultural capitals, uh, lush vineyards, magnificent monasteries, 
beautiful, endless uh, scenic splendor along the river's banks. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, but the Danube courses its way through Germany, Austria, Hungary, and seven other countries. It, uh, it travels a long distance uh, as it goes all the way to the Black Sea. Uh, but it truly is the soul of Central Europe. So when you travel with a Viking along, uh, you know, the Danube, you're going to have, you know, the opportunity again to see its uh, culture-rich banks, these beautiful towns and iconic cities, uh, but you're also going to see scenic vineyards, um, beautiful vineyards up, up on the hills, uh, ancient monasteries, uh, again, just uh, so much uh, to, to offer, to experience here on the Danube. Some of the highlights of it uh, on the Danube that's always stand out is, is Passau, uh, which is so enchanting. Um, it's, it's known as the city where the three rivers meet. Uh, there's lush vineyards that you're going to be uh, you know, witnessing and being able to experience on wine tastings as you uh, cruise through the Wachau Valley. You've got uh, Melk Abbey and how beautiful it is uh, in, this, in the beautiful town of Melk. Uh, and of course, Vienna. Oh. The city of waltzes, uh, you know, a lot of our, well, one of our itineraries actually spends the night uh, in Vienna, so you get two full days to experience all of the incredible things that you can do in Vienna from, uh, you know, experiencing the, the incredible parks and gardens and Schönbrunn Palace to go into uh, the Vienna Boys Choir uh, experience that night or, uh, you know, going to uh, Concerto. I mean, there's so many incredible things to do here. Uh, and getting two full days there is, is definitely recommended if you, uh, you know, want to experience as much as Vienna has to offer. But of course, you also have Budapest, which you see here, and the chain bridge that's in the foreground, the famous parliament building uh, behind it. Uh, of course, you've got the, the two towns, each on the one side of the river, Buda and Pest, uh, and it's just a, a great city to explore, um, and the views looking down uh, on the river uh, is just fantastic. It's, it's definitely one of the highlights, um, you know, when you're in the town is to go up on Fisherman's Bastion and look down at the, uh, at the city and the river below. The Rhine River is uh, also going to take you through the heart of Europe, but this is going to be taking you through the heart of Middle Europe. And it's really a, uh, a beautiful river, but it takes you through, uh, you know, this this land of fairy tales, you know, fairy tale villages and architecture. I mean, these fairy tale villages, you feel like you've just kind of been, you know, you've been um, put into a, an old, you know, fairy tale book. Um, it's just so magical. There's incredible castles um, that you'll be experiencing, especially in the Middle Rhine, uh, where you'll experience a castle almost uh, every mile along that stretch. That's that part of the of the Rhine, the Middle Rhine. The, um, uh, the, the, the valley there the, uh, of, of all the castles, that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, but there's just so many cultural centers here in iconic cities like Cologne, Amsterdam, um, you know, all the way down again to these beautiful uh, small towns. Um, the river's banks here, just like on the Danube, are just, you know, they're just overflowing with historic treasures. Um, just absolutely beautiful. Again, small towns, uh, you know, big, large, beautiful, vibrant capitals. Uh, you'll have, the, you know, your wine lovers, if you're into wine, this is a great river here for you because, you, of course, the Riesling uh, wines that are grown here in the claimed uh, Rhine River um, uh, Gorge. You've also got, uh, you know, beautiful countries here from, of course, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Germany, France uh, that you're going to be uh, cruising through. Uh, but they really, truly, the Rhine does, you know, kind of unfold this spellbounding, you know, dis display of storybooks, uh, villages, like I said, uh, you know, you're just going to experience it all. And again, Dutch windmills to German vineyards, Gothic cities, uh, it's just an amazing place. Uh, Marksburg Castle, which you see here is one of the most popular. It's the only castle uh, to not have been destroyed uh, or, or having to be rebuilt along the river. Um, but uh, it's right outside uh, there. Um, my mind just went blank on the city, um, but you're on the Rhine, and um, I'll think of it, of course, once I go to the next slide. But again, the Rhine has a lot to, lot to offer from Amsterdam and starting or ending there, uh, and of course, it's beautiful Dutch architecture and all the canals and the gabled houses, uh, traveling over to, uh, uh, to uh, Kinderdijk and the famous windmills there, which is UNESCO World Heritage Site. You've got Cologne, which is one of my favorite cities, that, and the beautiful Gothic cathedral there. Uh, one of the largest and oldest in all of Europe, uh, Marksburg Castle, which I just mentioned here, um, and, and Strasbourg, you know, it's been French, it's been in Germany, it's been in France, it's been in Germany, 
Um, it's definitely multicultural uh, there in the Alsace region, but it's just an, a charming, um, beautiful city. Um, and Heidelberg, uh, one of my favorite towns as well, uh, the charming town of Heidelberg to go and explore, uh, but a lot to see and do here on the Rhine. Now it brings us to the Main. Now the Main River connects the Rhine and the Danube. Um, it takes its time uh, because it's just, you can see here, it just kind of captures how it takes the circuitous uh, um, uh, route to, uh, you know, to the Rhine or to the Danube. It just twists uh, and arcs along its way uh, very leisurely through Germany uh, and some of uh, Germany's beautiful uh, you know, landscapes. So it served, uh, this river specifically served really as a geogra uh, geographic and cultural divide um, because it has separated languages, cuisines, and religions. Um, but today, you know, this river, it truly is just a wonderful, lazy waterway to, uh, to explore. It's definitely um, the pride of Germany. Uh, they, they definitely love um, this river because it's lined with all these wonderfully preserved, you know, picture postcard uh, towns and uh, vineyards and forest land. Um, you know, and, and you add in some of the um, incredible culture and historic landmarks, it's just a wonderful stretch here when you're on the Main River. Uh, Miltenberg is one of the famous uh, towns here and its uh, houses and its architecture because they have these uh, charming houses that are um, half timbered. Uh, you've got um, Würzburg and the uh, Bishop's residence there, or Würzburg, that are, is very popular. You've got uh, Gosh, what else? Uh, in Bomberg, you've got the town hall uh, that's built on a river's bridge that's very popular. Uh, you know, exploring the toy making heritage there in Nuremberg. Um, so, again, so much uh, incredible history here on the Main River in Germany. That brings us to the Elbe. Uh, the Elbe was once a very divisive uh, river, um, but today it stands for a symbol of unity because uh, along the Scenic River, you had East Germany. Um, you know, and here East Germany eventually became free. Uh, cities that once lay in rubble uh, now are uh, standing tall and, you know, breathtaking uh, scenery along this river as well. Um, it just has a lot, again, of, of that true German uh, experience. You know, it's a little bit more of a lesser known river and less traveled. This is going to be a river that would be perfect for you if you've done the Rhine, the Danube, uh, maybe uh, even the Seine or the Rhone in France. You know, this is one of those that's just a, a, a you know, smaller ship, fewer guests, uh, you know, more of a lazy river experience, uh, beautiful towns, but also, um, you know, the experience of, of having Berlin because you're going to get to experience Berlin, uh, Potsdam, you're going to have Prague, uh, Dresden, uh, Witten, uh, Wittenberg as well. So there's a lot to experience here, don't get me wrong, but it's uh, you know, one of the lesser known and smaller rivers uh, that you have in Europe. Now we also have uh, you know, the incredible rivers of France. Uh, you've got really truly a variety of rivers here in France alone, uh, because France, if you, if, you know, more than probably any other, France was definitely born along its rivers. Um, you know, and, and these rivers uh, in France definitely deliver you to some of uh, France's finest history and culture. Uh, you're going to see, again, charming uh, you know, towns and villages. You're going to see uh, incredible uh, romantic ruins like you see here, lush vineyards, um, beautiful, you know, vibrant cities like Paris to the small, charming towns of like Avignon or Arles. So you've got so much to see here. You've got the Rhone River down in southern France that's going to uh, do the Lyon and Provence itineraries. Uh, the Seine, which of course is uh, sailing uh, out of Paris, where you'll do our Paris and Heart of Normandy itinerary. Uh, you've got uh, the Grand Estuary and, uh, and Bordeaux on our Bordeaux uh, and, and uh, Chateau Cruise. Uh, and there's just really a lot to experience here. And, you know, again, from the City of Light uh, and being in Paris to you know, going to the Palace of Popes in the beautiful, charming town of Avignon uh, there on the Rhone River in southern France. Uh, if you're into cuisine, you know, you, the Rhone River is, is perfect because of the, the gastronomic, uh, you know, influence and, and gastronomic capital of France is Lyon there uh, on, the, on the Rhone River. Uh, of course, with Normandy uh, on our Paris and Heart of Normandy itinerary, I mean, just an incredible experience there walking the beaches and, uh, you know, seeing the American military cemetery there. Um, and if you're wine, of course, you've got wine not only on the, in Bordeaux, uh, but you also have, uh, you know, the opportunities to enjoy the wine and the various wines and vineyards along the Rhone River in southern France. So a lot to offer here in France on these particular rivers. 
That brings us to, uh, you know, Russia. And uh, we have one itinerary here called the Waterways of the Czars. And, you know, this is a wonderful itinerary for, I think, one main reason. And that's because we spend three days in Moscow and three days in St. Petersburg. So you get to really immerse yourself in the two main uh, cities and most important cities in Russia uh, and, and really go at your own pace. And again, choose what interests you the most. Uh, but a great itinerary, very popular. Uh, we usually have free air uh, with these from certain gateways. So definitely speak to your travel advisor at the cruise web uh, about that opportunity. And if we have that um, you know, uh, promotion available, but uh, we usually have free air for you on these itineraries on our waterways of the czars. Now brings us to Portugal uh, and the Douro River. Uh, this is a unique itinerary because the you know our itinerary we do here is actually uh, starts in, in um, Lisbon and we overnight in Lisbon to give you a tour of Lisbon and then we travel up to Porto where you'll board the ship. But the Douro is is you know great for wine lovers as well because this is going to travel you uh, you know on the Douro through these beautiful ancient wine estates known for its uh, famous Porto wine. Um, you know, this is definitely a, a, a scenic corner of Europe um, that I think is a little bit less explored, um, but incredible food, uh, music, atmosphere, of course, great uh, wines uh, with the port wines that they have there, uh, especially in Porto uh, to enjoy. Um, but again, lots of great things to see here. Uh, the, you know, the old historic uh, center of Porto's UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, but really, it's all about, uh, you know, the vineyards, and, and that's what you're going to enjoy as you travel along the beautiful Douro River. So which of these rivers is perfect for you? You may have already picked, the, uh, picked that river out uh, by, by its description already. But for first-time river cruisers, if, if you've never river cruised before, we highly recommend you look at the Rhine or the Danube. These two rivers are the most popular rivers for first-time river cruisers. And, you know, it's, I think at the last number I saw, a little over 70% of guests who book their first river cruise with biking go on the Rhine or the Danube. Um, you know, they're just, it really encompasses all the very best of river cruising. You've got the beautiful, charming towns and villages to the iconic cities. You've got vineyards and you have the opportunity for the wine. Um, you know, each has its own culinary, um, you know, uh, benefits, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the taste of the region you're traveling through. These are our most popular and best-selling itineraries, our Rhine Getaway, uh, our Romantic Danube. Those operate uh, either direction, uh, as you see there, Amsterdam, Basel, or Basel, Amsterdam, depending on what you want to do. Um, but we also have uh, our Grand European Tour, which combines the Rhine, the Danube, and the Main River uh, and gives you a 15-day cruise. Now, what's interesting is about 90% of our guests actually book the Grand European Tour. They then book the next river cruise is either the Rhine Getaway or another Rhine itinerary that we have or a, a Romantic Danube or a Danube River Cruise specific. So it speaks to uh, how much there's to see and experience on the Rhine and Danube. Uh, but the Grand European Tour does not go to the same towns and cities that the Rhine Getaway and the Romantic Danube do. So just know that uh, you know, when you look at those itineraries, you do have options there uh, in what you want to experience and, and do. So these are definitely the best rivers for first-time river cruisers, the Rhine or the Danube. Now, if you're a wine lover, uh, the best are, is definitely going to be uh, you know, drinking those beautiful uh, you know, reds in Bordeaux with our Chateau Rivers and Wine uh, there on the Drawn Estuary, uh, because you're going to have incredible cuisine, but you're also going to have uh, you know, all the experiences at uh, various uh, chateaus along the river uh, every single day and the different uh, Beaujolais wines uh, and Bordeaux wines that you're going to be uh, sampling every day. So that's definitely a wine lover's paradise. Leon in Provence, uh, again, I spoke a minute ago about, uh, you know, the incredible uh, Rhone River and uh, Leon in Provence, um, and then, you know, Avion in the Palace of the Pope. So Incredible history along the Rhone River, but uh, you know, incredible wine from the Chateauneuf de Pop and their famous reds uh, to uh, again the, the the various wine regions as you travel through Provence. Paris to the Swiss Alps is also another um, a popular itinerary. That's our Paris to Zurich. Uh, it travels through the Alsace region on the uh, on the Moselle uh, River and the Rhine Gorge. Our Cities of Light, Paris to Prague, and there are Portugal's River of Gold, of course, um, which I mentioned uh, there. Uh, cruising on the Duro. 
Um, and just again, great example of opportunities there if you're into uh, the wine. And from a history perspective, you know, everything in Europe is old, right? They, they have a rich history, much, 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 much older than, of course, the United States. So everything over there is going to be great for history lovers. But we kind of just picked these three um, as really um, some to look at. And that's the Paris and Heart of Normandy. And being able to, you know, walk the beaches of Omaha, to, to go up to the American Cemetery, to see what those uh, soldiers uh, sacrificed on that uh, day. Uh, back in June of, of 1944 uh, is a very moving experience. But you also have other incredible history things along the river there, of course, starting in Paris and uh, Versailles and uh, all the, the incredible museums in Paris, but also the opportunity to explore Monet's gardens there. Um, so there's really a lot to see and do on the Paris and Heart of Normandy. Our Grand European Tour, again, bringing uh, the best of the Rhine and the Danube and the mine, uh, especially for World War II uh, history lovers. Uh, you're definitely going to get to experience that. Uh, and then our passage to Eastern Europe, uh, which is a little bit lesser known traveled, or I wouldn't say lesser known traveled, but really for the uh, for those guests who want to, uh, again, they, they've maybe cruised the, reg the, the Rhine, the regular part of the Danube that most people do. Uh, they want to do something a little different. The passage to Eastern Europe has a rich history there, uh, traveling from, of course, Hungary through Croatia, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Romania. So uh, that's a great one uh, to think of as well. And I just will mention that, you know, there's also opportunities here. Um, so definitely speak to your travel advisor at the cruise web to do back-to-back -back cruises or combine itineraries. So uh, one of those combinations is uh, our heart, Paris in the heart of Normandy, and then doing our uh, Lyon and Provence itinerary. So it's uh, Francis Finest, I believe is the name of the itinerary. So uh, you'll do your Paris in heart of Normandy, get off the ship in Paris. We'll put you on a high-speed train down to Lyon, board the ship in Lyon, and then do that for a seamless 15-day uh, experience. So again, speak to your travel advisor about those opportunities. And we are seeing more and more guests uh, choose to book back-to-back -back cruises um, on the rivers uh, of Europe for 2022. I also want to mention uh, Oberammergau because, you know, this only comes around every 10 years, the Passion Play. Uh, it's been coming out, let's see, Passion Play has been happening now for over 400 years, I think, uh, maybe even farther than that, maybe it's 700 years. But of course, it happens uh, every 10 years. Uh, in the small town of Oberammergau, uh, there in um, uh, near the Black Forest, there in Germany, and uh, of course it was canceled last year because of uh, the, the the pandemic, and it has been rescheduled for next year. We're about ninety percent sold for this. We have four itineraries, uh, either cruising on the uh, Danube or the Rhine, and so if you're interested in Oberammergau, you definitely need to book soon because this is not going to be uh, available too much longer. So speak to your travel advisor again at the cruise web and they can assist you there. But these are all first class accommodations. Again, you'll uh, be fully escorted. You'll have a uh, premium category one seating, which is front and center uh, of the passion play. Uh, but again, uh, definitely book that uh, very soon before space is all gone. And then finally, let me just leave you with a couple of images of our beautiful Viking longships. Uh, again, these are award-winning state-of-the-art sister ships. Uh, the overwhelming majority of ships in our fleet are Viking longships. We've even built many versions of this, our mini longships. Uh, we have four of those ships uh, going to be debuting on the Sin River doing our Paris in the Heart of Normandy this year. Uh, and we're very excited to, to introduce those ships because it brings all the incredible um, uh, you know, things that we've got, uh, you know, on board and the layout and the best use of the design uh, to uh, those mini long ships that we'll have there uh, doing the Paris and Heart of Normandy. But again, beautiful, serene Scandinavian spaces. We focus on bringing in that, uh, you know, the natural light from outside. So floor to ceiling glass windows and all the public areas uh, and restaurants for you to enjoy. Um, but again, it's all about comfort. Uh, Relaxation is an integral part of what we do. Uh, and I'll just kind of go through this as I talk, uh, but just beautiful spaces, well accommodated. You've got, uh, you know, wonderful areas to curl up with a book and read, uh, you know, sip on a glass of wine and watch the, you know, the beautiful scenery go by. Uh, again, we've got a wonderful dining room area, uh, casual dining area uh, above at the Aquabee Terrace. Uh, again, this is a, up on the bow of the ship, which is a big advantage for biking to have this opportunity for our guests to sit out here. It's my favorite spot on the ship, hands down. Uh, nothing better than eating breakfast out here or lunch or just enjoying uh, the views of the rivers. We cruise uh, on those scenic days, especially through the Rhine Valley and, and, and seeing all those incredible castles. Of course, lots of outdoor deck space up on uh, deck as well. 
Wonderful uh, accommodations. Uh, definitely encourage you to speak to your travel advisor at the Cruise Web about uh, the different categories and the amenities or benefits that come with each category because they're all different. Um, but again, um, very comfortable. Um, they're lush, uh, plush. They've got wonderful uh, beds, uh, great uh, amount of storage space, uh, wonderful uh, bathrooms with heated floors and walk-in glass showers. Uh, but your accommodations range from, you know, what we like to joke as the swan view, which is the uh, uh, down below is the river view. Uh, so you have a window, but you're at about water's level. Then you go up to our French balcony that you see here and, and have a sliding glass door and just a step out there uh, or a full veranda where you can, you know, have table and chairs and sit and relax and more uh, spaciousness. Again, large bathrooms to go along with these. And then, of course, our veranda suite, which has a French uh, veranda in the uh, bedroom, and then a full veranda here in the sitting area. So with that, uh, you know, I want to just check and see if we have any questions here. And it looks like we do. Um, seasons and best time to travel. You know, that's one of the beautiful things about river cruising, as it is probably with anywhere, uh, is that the seasons do dictate your experience. You know, if you want to go in the springtime and ex uh, experience uh, beautiful Kuchenhof Gardens and all the tulips and bulbs blooming in the Netherlands uh, there, you know, you want to do the spring. Uh, spring and fall tends to be, you know, a little bit cooler and you definitely want to dress in layers. Uh, you know, it could, weather can be rainy one, one minute and, and sunny the next, but uh, it's definitely more, uh, you know, dressing in layers. Summertime can be quite hot. You know, we were on the Rhine River at the, uh, the end of July a few years ago, and it was, you know, definitely in the, in the mid to high 80s, uh, low 90s, I think even one day. So again, it's really just depends on when you, you know, want to go. And there's another question here, so I'm saying that about Christmas markets, um, because I didn't mention that. So yeah, absolutely. Christmas markets, obviously another season, um, you know, November, December, something, it's just something magical about a, a Christmas market cruise. Uh, again, the Rhine, the Danube are definitely two of the most popular rivers for that, but it's really just an incredible uh, experience, you know, there during the holiday season, um, you know, to experience Christmas markets. So I definitely encourage you to look at that. It, it's definitely creates some incredible memories. Um, see, and I have one other question here that I can answer before I need to, uh, to end this. Uh, biggest recommendation, gosh, biggest recommendation would be, um, oh gosh, uh, that's a hard one. Uh, probably Vienna, I would say, and going and experiencing, um, yeah, I would say Vienna and going to uh, like the uh, Vienna Boys Choir or seeing Concerto there, uh, Schönbrunn Palace, you know, one of the events that we do at night, I think is pretty amazing. Um, you know, there's just, you know, just be ready for the unexpected and always be looking, you know, out that window when the, the ship's moving because you never know what you're going to see outside as, as you cruise the river. Um, but river cruising is just an incredible experience. And again, you know, we want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, you know, uh, our partners at the Cruise Web, again, uh, you know, we work with them to take care of you and make sure you have an incredible experience from beginning to end. And uh, we're really, uh, you know, proud of uh, the partnership and the friendships we've developed uh, here with uh, the team at the Cruise Web. So definitely reach out to them. Uh, and if we didn't get to your question today, uh, you know, please let them uh, know and they'll be glad to answer that for you. But uh, again, we want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, very excited about uh, the future and what lies ahead. And uh, again, all this pent up demand from the pandemic is, is there. And uh, we definitely encourage you to, um, you know, book soon uh, and book as, as far in advance as you can to ensure you get the, the right accommodations and uh, sailing and date uh, that you need, uh, you know, that fits your schedule. So again, thank you so much for uh, your attention and attending today's presentation. We look forward to seeing you on Viking Cruises in the very near future. Take care.